The effects of the coronavirus really have no rhyme or reason. The same can be said of the vaccine. Reports of various side effects have popped up, not only in the U.S., but elsewhere. But how is the information being gathered? Who is recording it? And what's being done differently with the vaccine? Here's KPRC2 investigator Mario Diaz. It's been exactly one month since the world saw hope injected into a nurse's arm in New York City. <laughs> Ten days later, and nearly 1,800 miles away, in the tiny town of Ganado, 90 minutes southwest of Houston, an early Christmas present for physician assistant Bruce Ramsey. I received the vaccine about 4.30 Christmas Eve. And by the next morning... I rolled over on my left shoulder and... Oh boy, <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Sore arm, muscle aches, mild fever, headaches. These are the most common post-vaccine side effects according to the CDC. Ramsey says they are also good signs, signs the immune system is responding. It's your body coating itself to that vaccine to build antibodies. But there are other, potentially more serious side effects making headlines and causing some concern. One case involves a South Florida doctor who died two weeks after his vaccination. The CDC now reviewing his case. So VAERS is the nation's early warning system for vaccine safety. When a person is vaccinated for anything, if they have a reaction or side effect, the healthcare worker is responsible for reporting it to the CDC. Channel 2 Investigates crunched the agency's VAERS database and found 287 events reported in Texas only through December 29th. Included is the death of an 84-year-old woman. Her event is being reviewed by the CDC. A total of 11 events were classified as serious. At the time, the state had administered roughly 250,000 vaccines. The takeaway, 0.004% of the vaccines list a serious event, potentially tied to the vaccine. Most immediate allergic reactions occur within 15 to 30 minutes of vaccination. In some cases listed, EpiPens were part of the recovery. It was not seen in our trial, and I don't think even in the Pfizer trial. Dr. Hannah El Sali with Baylor College of Medicine is the national co-chair of protocol for the Moderna vaccine. We are surprised because um, it, it exceeds by a little what we see with other vaccines. Uh, having said that, the risk of allergic reaction is always there. The CDC also has taken an additional step to get information directly from people who've received the vaccine. We told you about VSafe last week. It's an app for patients who've been vaccinated. You can voluntarily sign up after the shot and fill out a survey. The CDC has published limited data from those surveys covering only the first five days of the vaccine rollout. About 2.8% of those who filled it out reported some side effect, mostly those body aches, headaches, and low-grade fever. Only six people out of more than 112,000 reported serious allergic reactions. Do you anticipate more uh, VAERS reporting as that second shot gets implemented? Uh, yes, for both vaccines, the uh, reactions uh, are more common after dose two. Bruce Ramsey's second dose is a few days out. So I'm anticipating how I felt Christmas Day possibly worse. But he says the temporary discomfort is worth the long-term benefit. All I can do is plead with everybody, get the vaccine. I've lost, I've lost several close friends and it's, it's, it's not worth it. With all eyes keeping tabs on the performance of the vaccines, information is key. And if you are older, you'll appreciate this last bit of info from Dr. Solly. She says her team has observed that in the Pfizer and Moderna trials, older people actually had less reaction than their younger counterparts. But again, not everyone experienced reactions. Mario Diaz, Channel 2 Investigates. Thank you, Mario. If you have a story for Mario and the KPRC2 Investigates team, call their tip line at 713-223-TIPS or send them an email, investigates at kprc.com.